Dylan, Dylan, you know, rebelling against his family name by playing the main deck Graft Digger's Cage. I know, Iona. He must not know how Iona enters the battlefield. You don't actually cast it. So anyway, yeah, two main deck cages. <laughs> Now, Double main deck cage. If, like maybe if, one, if one main deck cage, but like two. One, like imagine if you, if you had a trinket both. mage. If you had a trinket mage with one, I'd be like, okay, okay. But no, no. Two means I like this card. Two means I just I want to draw it. Yeah, it one funny. means I might not draw it. You know? you know, when you see a card like Gravedigger's Cage, there are a whole bunch of people who are like, man, this, you know, this makes my some X graveyard de deck like you know lose so hard. And then there are. Uh, there's a whole nother group of people who are so upset that their pan-glacial worms aren't going to be... <laughs> yeah. Interesting, sorry, the, the Pascal, man, the, Pas, the Pascal Caleb discussion, start kind of starting a discussion on Twitter, um, you know, feel free to, feel free to sound in on it. We have a, got a lot of people talking about it. Yeah. All right, so we have a die roll. Soon we'll know uh, who's in the play. We'll see if Dylan has uh, access to his main deck, Craft Digger's Cage. <laughs> if, he, if he plays it, you know, I, I want to see him play it on the first turn, you know, keep, and then just kind of watch the expression on the other side of the table. That would be so funny. Like, if Cage you're, go, if you're what, Bill, what, what like, is do this? you call a judge? <laughs> Um, I think if I'm playing Freets in game one, my opponent like, just goes like, Cage go. Cage, cage goes. I think I call a judge. I just want to make sure that this is, this is, is this happening? Is this real? Mem Knight? Cage. <laughs> and there it is. All right. All right. Dylan's on the play. Yep. All right. Boy, that's pretty good here, huh? Yeah. Hey. Now, uh, <laughs> Bill has... No main deck answers to crafting your cage. No, he does not. And remember, Flayer of the Hatebound won't undie also. It is just a 4-2 for 6 now. Some rough beats. Some really rough beats. Post board, uh, Will Stack can very easily beat a cage. You know, sure. He Probably not with his grudges. Game one. Well, there there we go. Um, he's going to have to cast his things fairly. Mem Knight swings in for one, puts Bill down to 19. Then a Razor Bridge Thicket out of Dylan. He plays second cage. Oh, wow. So Dylan Mulligan to five, basically, though. And his hand doesn't do anything because he has the Graft Digger's cages. At this point, so. my Bell is like, well, one, I understand. And I thought second would probably an eyebrow raise of, what, what's going on here? What, what is this? So Bill, and I love Fright, Freet's opening hands, where it's like, OK, Black Loop Cliffs into Razor Bridge Thicket into birds. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I remember I played against uh, Levy at the Pro Tour. I, no one, I hadn't heard about this deck before. And it was, yes, it was turn one, Thicket, Avacyn's Pilgrim. I was like, okay, swing green, white deck. Turn two, Dark Slick Shore. I was like, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what's, what's happening here? So uh, Dylan casts Glintock, he swings Mem Knight, casts Glintock, uh, bounces Mem Knight, replays. Passes the turn, Shimmering Grotto out of Bill now. And he's going to tap three for Lingering Souls. Yep. In Bill, the thing is, the cool part about Freets is it can still play as a pretty fair, just, it can be, it's like a bad ramp deck. When you take away its reanimation spell, it, it plays like a very mediocre ramp deck. But sometimes, you know, that's fine. When your opponent has a start with, you know, two Graft Digger's cages, even a bad ramp deck's okay. Uh, Gavoni Township, so Dylan down to one card. Gavoni Township, pretty good Mox here. Mox Opal, Gavoni Township, so we'll have a Township activation right now. Yeah, so Will can double block. I think you double block Mem Knight. Knight. Yeah, yeah. And that's the best play. And he, he's going Force to do that. Force him to pump. Well, the thing is, is, this is one of your last two... Remember, every time the Gavoni Township act activates, it's like, it's two counters. So, by killing one guy while he still can, he's essentially preventing, you know... Two plus three plus four. He's putting like nine damage down the road by making mm -hmm. by just trading at all costs right now, which is which is great. And Bill with a fourth land. It comes to play tapped. It's a uh, copper line gorge. He's gonna play more lingering souls. Remember, these can't flash back. So they're one time only. At this point, he may let the Glintock get in once. Uh, if the souls are gonna be running the chump blocks, he's gonna want them to run the chump block. Once, like you, you'd rather chump block, you know, the five-five Glintock than the three-three Glintock. So you yeah, might, you might take sense. it now. Okay, he, he he's gonna start chumping now though. 
which is fine. That's kind of reasonable. I mean, in a lot of ways, that encourages your opponent not to use the township, and then you might be able to, like, get... Etched Champion out of Dylan. Uh, and it is metal crafted. will almost certainly stay metal. It will stay metal crafted. Bill can't get rid of the cages or the opal, so that'll have pro all colors for the rest of the game. That's going to be pretty bad for Will here. Uh, yeah, it's right now. I mean, Bill could. Tr Bill needs to get to get up to Elish Norn really quickly. That would I think mm -hmm. that would really help him. Huntmaster of the Fells would be okay. Six mana. Inferno Titan. All right. Which is awesome. He gets the Glintock just in time. He couldn't mm -hmm. get it next turn. You know, he may... I actually think Bill's in a pretty good situation here. Yeah, now now Bill's winning the race. Kind of cra Oh, not Dispatch will change that. Kind of crazy. <laughs> You're playing a reanimator deck and your opponent goes turn one cage. Turn two cage. Both. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, swings three. Bill goes to 12. So it's going to be four, five, six... He has, he, Bill is three swings from dead. Mm -hmm. And actually, it doesn't have to be four, five, six. Four, four, four is the same clock. So Dylan only has to, or even three, four, five. So Dylan like only has to activate once more, and then he can be free to play more spells. It won't change the clock. Uh, Bill is going to cast mulch. mulch. Just find some lands. I think, presumably, he has something like an Elish Land. 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 Flare. Flare. Birds. Bird. It's okay, hard. So, Divination, yeah. kind of. Bad Div Divination, but you kind of hit some bad cards for two. Hmm. That's still completely reasonable. It's fine. I imagine the thing is, the strength lands. of those cards in this deck, like, they typically hit one card on average. So when you, when you can't flash them back and don't care about your graveyard, they just, in general, become incredibly weak cards. So Dylan swings again, this time for four... Putting Bill to eight, passes the turn right back. Uh, Will we see Elish Norn out of Bill? One, two. Yes, we will. Yeah. Here comes And we the will legend. see Elish Norn. The Grand Cenobite. And that'll decrease the clock. Swings three of the Lingering Souls, puts Dylan down to 15. So Dylan's champion, just a 2-2 two -two now, now a 3-3. Three -three. Yep. So three, four, five. Elishnorn bought him one additional turn, but also bought him, you know, a flying army of doom. Yeah. So I think I think Bill ahead on the race. He gets in here for three, five. Seven, yep, because nine. Yep. Yep. Coming in for because nine. The, the champion only champion currently a five, five. Even with a pump. Still down to six. The champion with three counters. Yeah, knocking down to six. Uh, you know, more flyers for good measure. More dudes for good measure. Say go. And, uh, you and know, this it, is, it. is Bill going to defeat the, the dreaded turn one, turn two cage opening? It, I mean, it looks like he may. It's pretty sweet. That is really sweet. Dylan sitting here. Does he have a play? The Gavoni Township will not be enough. Yeah. Oh, man. Well done, Bill. Well, if Dylan can... If, uh, no, he can't play blockers, really. They all just die. Yeah. We're, we're in a post Elish Norn. Post Elish Norn world. And yeah, uh, let's see. I'm looking at his list of cards he could have. They look like they all are dead on arrival. Um, he could play Tempered Steel, then play some Glint Hawks and stuff. If he has well, a Tempered Steel, just wins the game, right? If he had, oh yeah, wait, Tempered Steel just wins. He just, yeah. If he has that, he just wins. So um, if he had Tempered Steel, he needs we would dis know. Dispatch would win too. Dispatch would also win. But yeah, if he had either of those, he would have. I don't see any live draws on his list. I think I think Bill's got it. I'm going to say go. Which is a good play. Uh, the, the swing back from the champion will be lethal next turn because he can double. He can, it's a 3-3 three, three right now. Mm -hmm. Township, untap, township swing. Yep, Bill's got to just... One, two, three, four. Bill has exactly send. six. Send everything. Is that good enough? That's it. And that's yeah. good enough. Bill, Bill takes the first game, defeats the double <laughs> graph digger cage opening, game one. Reanimator like, doesn't care. <laughs> Think about how crazy that is. Like, you, <laughs> you have this... Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. That's... So... Yeah. <laughs> my mind is, like, really blown right now. <laughs> that's so fun. All right. So, out of the board... He was on the draw, too. He was on the draw. Well, I mean... Yeah. But I, I mean, the, the I mean, the turn one Graftigger's Cage on the play. I mean... Well, the turn one Graftigger's Cage in general, like... 
the big problem is like there you really saw like the problem with playing cards like that is you they just don't have do anything. Like, they don't do anything. Well, there's the second cage. Now is the that's that, that's a mulligan. I mean, and the first one did a lot. The first one did a lot. The first one did a lot. was great. Yeah. Like, there would have been a lot more lingering things lingering And flashback, around flashback and... of the, the, the faithless... No, the, the first one did a ton. So, okay, what do they have? Um, two hero blade hold, maybe. Shrine of Loyal Legion certain. I don't think it comes in here at all. I don't think it comes in here. I think Ratchet Bomb, if, if Dylan's playtest this matchup, I think Ratchet Bomb comes in. I think you're right. Because the trick to the Freed's deck is that you want to set the Ratchet Bomb on one and just go and then, like... Just massacre some mana creatures. I think that's that's probably you know that you can't actually. It also raise like them. lets you like Alpha Strike. You can use it as a falter to get through Lingering Souls tokens. Right. You know, um, it has it has a lot of different modes in this matchup. It, if you can ever kill more than one mana guy with it, it's backbreaking. Uh, I like Ratchet Bomb against Freeze. Yeah. Uh, I think Bill also wants to bring in his Ratchet Bombs. Uh, Ratchet Bomb, pretty good against. Uh, temper steel, yeah. In general, I think uh, good against the uh, the cages. The Ratchet Bomb. He has two Ancient Grudge. I mean, obviously, the, those will come so in. He'll probably bring those in. What do you think of one can expect? He has three Grim Lava Mancer. I actually like that card here. Yeah, I, oh, that card's really good here. Yeah. So if he brings in Ratchet Bomb, G Grim Lava Mancer, and Grudge, he just he start, he probably just starts siding out things like Mulch. You know, at this point, you can, he can become, or trackers, like, he can just become more of a classic deck. I think those cards have pretty good synergy with the Lava Mancer. Um, yeah, okay, maybe those are good with Lava Mancer. I'm trying to think. Um, Flare. So, Flare, you, you don't need that. Yeah, I think Flare's pretty weak here. Um, as far as, if I'm trying, you know, comparing, like, drawing a Flare in this matchup to drawing an Inferno Titan is pretty, you know, the Flare looks really bad sitting side by side. Flare's good because it has Undying, so it's good against control decks. Um, if you're moving away from Worm Coil Engine in your main, you still want something that is hard to deal with. Flare's probably better at that, but... Flare quite good against, uh, you know, these Delver decks, I think. You know, when you're playing this deck, I you mean, kind of just kill them with it. Outside of being a six-mana sorcery, I think it's good against Delver. There's that there's that six-mana sorcery that doesn't impact the board right away problem that I actually... It's pretty bad. That's actually a pretty bad... Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a painful one. I'm actually surprised it's not just like four Inferno Titan, one Flare. Yeah, I would agree with that. Inferno Titan's so good. Oh, well, it's good. But yes, Inferno Titan. Inferno Titan is really good. Now, if you unburial rights a Flare, to be fair, it does four the first turn. Correct? Does it? Does it see? Does it see itself come into play and deal four if you unburial rights it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty neat. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, Inferno of Titan, when you unveil rights, it does three divided, which is probably better than four. Yeah. I mean, unless they are playing a hero of Blade Old. Uh, you know, that's the only situation I can think of where I'd rather have four. Or if my opponent's at four. The other thing about the, uh, the flyer is that like, it obviously just, like, makes your chain unbeatable. That's true. As opposed to... You know, any other thing, your chain is still beatable. I did, when I ran um, Freets at Grand Prix Baltimore, and sometimes I had the problem that I was playing against decks, and like, like I played against, especially against Planeswalker Control, where I was actually reanimating something every turn, but I wasn't winning. If you had Flare, you would have been. Right, and I think that, yeah, that, and you know, the problem was like, oh, you're gonna outspell Tyrell, make some more blockers. Um, yeah, it was like I had two Worm Coils, and you know, in play, and yeah, Dylan's going to six cards. And out of two worm calls in play, and uh, he's swinging, and somehow I still wasn't winning. You know, I cast an Elish Norn, all his stuff would die. Then he'd tragic slip it. And then he'd like make some more blockers. Like, da, this is my game plan, and it's not <laughs> winning. This is awful. <laughs> and I feel like if I had player, that you're right, it wins those games. So Bill Lee is here. Interesting freets list. I'm yeah, I'm really. This is. A really cool take on it. I know that, that ever that since the French team played it at Hawaii, there's been a, a decent amount of innovation on it. This is newer though. I really like what he's done with it. Um, speaking, I like how Freeze has now incorporated Huntmaster. Red Green Ramp has incorporated Huntmaster. You know, just like and especially for people who are playing block, what do you have? Like Huntmaster, it's quite a card. 
It is a card. Hey. All right, Dylan, on the play. Memnite, Memnite, Opal, Fault Scourge, Scourge. No Lands. No Lands. Now, and he has a dispatch if... in hand. Yeah. So, okay. Imagine Bill has a Ratchet Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> ratchet bomb crack it. <laughs> Birds of paradise. Bird, go. I mean, I'm pretty sure if Bill has a ratchet bomb, this is over. Yes. I will kill two of your guys and stone rain you. Graft Digger's cage. Oh man, he top deck the cage too. <clears throat> All right. So now the question is, can Bill just do, if his deck can just do its thing, he should be able to win. It, Dylan starts not really fast enough to pose too much of a threat. Tractors? Oh, I, I almost thought. <laughs> I was hoping, you're, you're hoping for Ratchet Bomb. Huntmaster of the Fells actually is probably good enough here. Yeah. As long as he can, if he can cast it next turn, I believe Huntmaster will also win this game. If he can just, you know, just make two more land drops, make a Huntmaster. Black Cleave Cliffs to join his Copper Line Gorge. Pass the turn. I mean, that's actually not true. Dylan does have a Dispatch, so, okay. That's I, true. I, I should temper my comment there. Bill yeah. goes to 14, Dylan back up to 19 off the Vault Scourge. Or he should be, no, he's at 20 now, isn't he? But I mean, it, it, the 2 2's surprisingly big that the Huntmaster leaves behind here. Well, yeah, and, and it blocks he's also going to gain two, so. Cards exceedingly strong on, against yeah, and then Dylan's Zero Lander. Well, it's, it's, like, it's like also kind of scary for Dylan because if Bill ever draws a Ratchet Bomb, the game just ends on the spot. Yes. Or even like an Ancient Grudge is pretty close to the game ending. And you chart Opal. Yeah. You probably don't get cute and go with the other artifacts. You probably don't try to turn off the Opal. You just blow up the Opal. It's his only land. Two mana. He's not going to go for... Okay, so he's not going to go for Huntmaster. He's going to grudge the Opal. Okay, this is better. Yes. And so he doesn't have a mana bird. So Dylan with no no real plays. That's um interesting. If Bill was just gonna make that play, I feel like Bill should have uh, played his copper line gorge this turn, as opposed to his untapped land. Planes. Yeah. Okay. Planes and swing. Putting good draw step for Dylan. He needed one. Uh, yeah. Bill drops to 11. Dylan up to 21. Sorry, the still says 18. I believe he's at 21. The Vault Scourge is still gaining life. Mm -hmm. Land and play. All right, so now I think we need to go for Huntmaster. It's not going to work. Absence Pilgrim joined by Huntmaster of the Fells. That's going to get a dispatch, but Bill goes to 13, gets another blocker in play. Um, I think Bill in the, in the driver's seat again. Mm-hmm. Tempered Steel, so what has happened to Tempered Steel? We saw Channel Fireball playing it at Worlds, and I think, I'll be honest, I know like it was supposedly the breakout deck of Worlds, I didn't think it was very good at Worlds. I didn't think it was very good either. I don't, I don't know, I, I don't think it's a very good deck, I think it's inconsistent, I think. And here we watch, again, Dylan just has these cages that I, don't don't affect yeah. his clock. I mean, yeah, no, nothing against Channel Fireball, like I know they made four of them main top eight with the deck. As I recall, like, I think they all had superb draft records, and I think that's one of the things that was is overlooked about those results. It's like I think most of them went six zero and five one in their drafts. Um, and that happens a lot at Worlds. So you, a deck like, you know, like the Naya deck that won the year before that, you know, it, it went two four in the standard portion of Worlds, and then he did really well in extended in the top eight. And draft, and then in the top eight he happened to win all three matches. Yeah. So. So it's like I mean, so that's an end record of five four. Yeah. Yeah. There's the Naya, the Naya yeah. lightsaber deck. You know that that's not. I mean, that's the cool part about the multi-format event. But I remember not being overly impressed by Tempered Steel. It's very explosive. It also is pretty fragile. So Bill building up mana-wise towards something. Lingering Souls coming out. All oh, right, he can't grudge. He couldn't flash back the grudge. That was why, because the, there's a Graft Digger's Cage out. I'd forgotten that. My apologies. I'm actually surprised he didn't just aim it at the cage first and then at the... Well, there was a, did he know about was the second cage there yet? There was a second cage. You almost want to say, oh, well, okay. 
This is Shatter. Plays land and Glintock idle. So Dylan's board now Memnite, Memnite, Vault Scourge, idle, two cages. Has Bill at 12. But really remember, it's only a matter of time until Bill casts. He has now has Ele is at Elish Norn mana. Once Elish Norn hits, that's. Nope, here we go. I think it's Elish Norn. Dylan bins everything, and this is this is this is trivial now. Okay, swinging seven, no, swinging ten by Bill puts Dylan to twelve. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. The reanimator deck is nothing more than a glorified ramp deck in this match. Oh yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> too just, many cages. And that's just match. Bill Lee's that's defeats the match. Dylan. Dylan Ionis, two games to zero, moves into the four and zero bracket. Yeah. In both games, we saw multiple graph diggers cages. On the other side of the table. Right. The, the reanimator deck just decided to hard cast an Elish Norn and the game ended. Second one actually.